Welcome to Best Recaps, guys. Today we will try some sarcastic approach to review this movie. Let us know what you think. Enjoy and have some fun. Oh boy, here we go again with another Steven Seagal movie. Code of Honor, huh? Well, I'm sure it's going to be a real masterpiece. The movie begins with Siegel's brilliant idea of how drug deals go down, with a bunch of guys standing around with guns in plain sight. Real 80s style. But hey, at least it looks like it might be half decent for a minute before Siegel insults everyone from above. <laughs> then, he starts taking out the bad guys while they just stood there waiting to be shot. No real action movie begins without Cowabunga move from a tall building. That is easy move, even if you are above 60 and overweight. And don't even get me started on the body double scene. I knew you did it. Next, we meet Siegel's former pal, who can't stop expressing about how great Siegel is. It is like the Siegel himself wrote the script. Oh, and he's there to help out the police about mysterious professional killer, of course. Get over here! We are treated to the natural habitat of Steven Siegel where a creepy old man lurking in a strip club during daylight hours. After the badass shot of him in slow motion, he exits, slowly, detonating a bomb. Was that a cinematic walk away from an explosion or what? The news channel covering the incident is so low budget that they spout off ridiculous claims about military-grade bombs. At the crime scene, the police are concluding it was a bomb. Really? The police's intelligence looks like it is written by same script writer. No way. But fear not, there's still plenty of time for Siegel to outdo himself in the remaining 80 minutes of the movie. Can't wait to see what other absurdities he'll pull off. Porter sees Siegel and try to catch up with him, but it is no wonder that he disappeared, considering how vital and fast-running action man he is. So Porter finally decides to spill the beans to the NYPD about Siegel, or should I say Colonel Robert Sykes, because apparently his skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapons, firearms, and explosives are unmatched. I wonder how come Marvel haven't recruited him yet. And to top it off, he doesn't drink, do drugs, sleep around, or smoke. How impressive for a man who have not even served army in real life. But wait, there's more. Siegel then decides to execute two guys during the arrest because why not? And just to add some filler, we get a pointless action scene even without Siegel. Hey. Oh, and let's not forget the scene where a hooker is thrown out of a car and Siegel decides to execute her pimp with CGI bloodshots as we see in Counter-Strike. Terrorists win. But leaves her unharmed. How kind of him. And then we have Carrie, a stripper who really has no purpose in the movie but keeps showing up for no reason, like someone from production has a soft spot for hookers. The Mafia thinks she had something to do with a strip club bombing just because she was asked some questions by an investigator. Brilliant detective work there. So, this lady was almost killed by some guys, but luckily, a porter shows up in last second as in the movie, out of nowhere for no reason at all and kills them all with his empty gun. Then Siegel turned up after he waited until Porter's gun was real empty so he can save him with CGI even worse than previous shots. Apparently, Siegel is responsible for eliminating all violent crime in New York, which is just more ridiculous than Batman Saga. <coughs> Siegel sets up a meeting with Porter, who wears a wire for some reason. Turns out it was all just a waste of time because Siegel decided to spew some hurtful insults at poor Porter. He basically told him that his wife left him because he's a terrible person and even revealed that there's a bomb under his chair. How inspiring. Porter has to stay in his chair because of a bomb while taking an action shooting. I wonder how Siegel missed this awesome unreal scene. While Siegel got tired of that much action, he decides to do all the action scenes sitting down from now on. Probably in his next movie he will kill with the look only. Carrie finally shows up to report a mass killing, but no one seems to care because it's a Siegel movie. And get this, Porter doesn't even work for the FBI. What a shocker. <coughs> from this moment, the script writer got high and he tried to twist the genre from action movie to mystery thriller, and you taught it as a dumb movie. The movie takes a ridiculous twist where you start to question if Siegel's character even exists. And of course, it all leads to a final showdown on top of a building for no apparent reason. So this guy thinks he's some kind of badass with his little knife like it is a sword, waving it around like a toddler with a toy. And of course, nobody believes him because he's just embarrassing himself. But wait, it gets even better. The FBI helicopter shows up. Because apparently this is what Steven Siegel does. He attracts helicopters like a magnet. 
Let me remind you, this is a movie from 2016, not the 80s. But then, for no apparent reason, Siegel blows up the entire floor of the building. Because why not, right? And then, just when you think it can't get any dumber, it turns out that the main character never even existed. His name wasn't even what we thought it was, and the army sent over files with the wrong pictures. Because that's a totally believable resolution, right? But hey, it's the end of the movie, so if you have been wondering why am I pronouncing Siegel like this through the whole movie, it's because it is the right pronunciation. Steven just taught in one moment in his life that Seagal sounds fancier, so he started to tell people to start calling him that way. And yes, it is a true fact. Steven Siegel. What do you think about this different approach to recaps? If you would like to see more recaps told through this sarcastic criticism, please let us know in comments below. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.